you could always follow on Nefesh Rachaim on sefaria.org. We are in Nefesh Rachaim, Shar Aleph, Perek Dalet. Best would be to follow in the book. That way, because that's an in-book study, so we continue um, this learning. So, where we are to, just a very brief and quick summary. Uh, we're studying the concept of being created in the image of Hashem. What does it mean to be created in the image of Hashem? Nefesh Chaim says, don't leave any detail out. And when it says the image of Hashem, it doesn't say Hashem, it says uh, Elohim, Davka. And Elohim is a specific description. I would say the name Elohim is the probably the most controversial name ever, being that it's written in plural. And if it talks about Hashem, why would the monotheistic religion talk about the plural, you know, use a plural word for, uh, um, for describing God? And the answer is, it's really, if you want the, 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 the part of Hashem of being the executive part of Hashem, if you want from executing, some things when he does things in the world. It's everything talking about Elohim, as we already know, because in the creation of the world, it only uses the word Elohim. So it's not by any uh, uh, coincidence that it's the same word always coming back. And if Elohim is chosen there, it's the creation. Hakol Yachol, the one, the Bono Shel Olam, the Bon Olam. And uh, we saw some controversial Pesukim also, Ki Elohea Elohim. What is the God of the gods? It sounds like, hey, you're giving some credit to, you know, the Avodah Shalom. That's not what it means. Ki gadol Hashem mikol Elohim. What does that mean? Does it mean he's greater than the other? Chas Shalom. Again, it's misunderstood many, many times. Uh, what it means to say is that as long as you connect Yud Kevavke with Elohim, meaning that basically... Hashem is in control of all the powers, and the powers, in a sense, could be representative of Hashem himself. So if you see the sun, you could see God. As long as you understand that above the sun, there's some, someone, Akadosh Baruch Hu, who is controlling and fueling, even more than controlling, but fueling uh, people, uh, uh, things, uh, powers, uh, everything that happens in the world is being fueled by Akadosh Baruch Hu. And if it is how uh, we understand it, so then, Hashem Israel, Hashem Elokinu, Hashem Echad makes a lot of sense. Hashem Elokinu. Well, you know, understanding that pasuk that we say so many times is so chashu and so important. Hashem Israel, Hashem Elokinu, Hashem Echad. What does that mean? Hashem Elokinu. Hashem is all the powers that we are connected with. Hashem Echad, Hashem is one. Because this is the ultimate. Um, understanding of how these things work. So therefore, when you say Elohim, Selem Elohim, you are in the image of that, it means that we have to have a little bit of that to understand what it means that we are the image of it. And if this Akadosh Baruch Hu, the power of Hashem being the uh, um, um, endless power of Hashem from Yesh um, Me'ayin, um, creating something from nothing, and we are the image of that description of Hashem, so it must be that we have that too. And uh, therefore went into the subject of how is that possible? And the Nefesh Achaim quotes several sources that say that we are the reflection of God in the sense that we could also do things based on nothing, meaning that our influence is much, much stronger than what we believe. When I do something and I think I'm narrow-minded and narrow uh, 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 ability to, to see what, where my, my actions or my thoughts or my diburim could have an impact. We think that there are only, you know, as much as we could see, as much as we could feel, it's much deeper and much bigger and much greater and much broader than that. It has impacts not only on other people, but way above that also in the Kabbalistic way, and, 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 and above and above and above and above in everything that exists in the video. I will see why. Uh, this is just the beginning of a very, very long topic. So we saw that, you know, with the, the, the you know, Pasuk that is extremely complicated to understand without this concept, because Tenu Oz Lelokim, 
when you think about that pasuk gives strength to Elohim again, it's not just a, a coincidence that it's coming back, meaning that we were put, like we give the example of being the one in charge or the CEO or executive uh, member or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I like calling it the joystick we control from, from down here. Sometimes you control without even knowing what you are controlling, but the joystick is in your hand. And not because you don't know how far it goes, doesn't mean that that's not correct, that's not true. Now, the last time we had two things that we spoke about. Uh, the first thing, the first topic that we mentioned was, why is it that Nefesh HaChaim changed from Selem Elohim, which apparently talks about the whole of humanity, and he switched to Israel. So this is a change that happened uh, already in the middle of Perek Gimel, and definitely at the beginning of Perek Dalet, when it says clearly in this, uh, every Jewish person should not say in his heart, you know, who am I, what do I do, blah, 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 the whole thing. You know, you should know that you have extreme power, etc., etc. Why did he switch from Selem Elohim was not said only for Jews, Selem Elohim is for everybody. And, and how do you go from Selem Elohim for everyone to saying, oh, now I'm talking to the Jews, you know. How did this happen? Where, where, you know, what's this stuff? So I cheated and I told you the intro. He's going to say somewhere. I don't remember where. I told you already. Um, but it's, he's going to say somewhere that at the moment of the Har Sinai. So we took a long time on that, explaining that was really, you know, how the connection between the Torah, the creation of the world, and Akadosh Baruch Hu coming forth and offering that uh, project to whoever wants to take it. And when B'nai Israel take it on themselves to become partners with Hashem at this moment, in the creation of the world using the same Torah. And that's when Akron Baruch says, okay, the Tzelem Elohim now is going to be narrowed only to those people who accept themselves this, uh, this project. And that's where there's a shift. It's very important, that shift. Um, at this moment of basically the giver and the taker, of, if you want, the one who takes the decisions and the one who is, uh, uh, if you want, uh, uh, you know, has to work with these decisions. So uh, it doesn't mean that the, the, the nations of the world do not have any power. That's not what I mean. But the Tzelem Elohim power that is given uh, to, the, to the first man is, in a sense, being uh, taken away and putting into Klali at this moment. And this is uh, the first thing we discussed. The last thing we discussed was my crazy story with that guy, Eddie. And the reason I brought that story was only because of the Lashon that Neve Shechaim says that Kol ma'ashevotav, all the details of the, 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 the luxury of detail, all the points of all the details of the actions of the words and the thoughts of a person. Kol et varega, every single instant. La it avidu, they're not lost. So I gave you that example that uh, was just, you know, for an example that for me was very, very shocking. But uh, that's okay. That's enough of these things. That's not really my cup of tea. But it was just an interesting, crazy story that happened to me and I couldn't keep it to myself. So like Avidu Hashem, it doesn't get lost. They're not lost. They're there. You may not see them. You may not, but they're there. They're there. And then again, I lived that. So that was incredible. So let's continue the text again, Perek Dalet, about four or five lines from the top. That every single action or every single dibur uh, word, every single machshava, they don't get lost. They're not, they're not just there. We're going to see in a minute a couple of things. And uh, actually all of those, ola kefi shorsha, they go to their source, their root, we all have different roots and different sources, although they come basically from the same place. If all peulatah begovhem elomim, there could be differences in the influence we could have above and in the world in our positions, like anybody. You know, if you are, uh, uh, I, I was going to say, you're more connected than others, uh, uh, there it doesn't work by pull. Uh, it works in a different way. It depends on the behavior of the person how connected, how influential the person could be in the world and in the worlds above. So um, each one will go according to its root. To do whatever they, they may do or they, they have to do, they will do in the above. 
בעולמות וצחצחות העולות העליונים, in the higher spheres up there. So everything, as we're going to see, has a connection. So you have the, the, the spiritual world and the, uh, uh, you know, the material world. Uh, how does that work? Normally we think that we are a reflection of the above world. Uh, what Devesh Chaim is saying is actually a revolution. I don't know if we're getting it yet. It's really the opposite. Think about it. Think of, it's not completely the opposite. Obviously, you know, there's uh, you know, a lot of spirituality and a lot of things that, that are at a much higher level than, than we could be. But there's this a revolution here when you say it's not that you are the consequence of what's happening there. It's the opposite. You decide also for up there. So the center of decision is not there, and this is down here we get the consequences. It could be true, but that's only half the picture. Really, the picture starts here. Starts by us, by sending the message of it. We, by doing our actions, our diburim and machshavot, we are making decisions for update that may have consequences down here. It's a circle, it's a buckle, but it goes, it starts from here. You're not the lower wall like they like to call it. I think we're in the upper wall right down here, down there, because we really, what's up? Up means power, right? You are here making decisions for everything. So if that's the case, we're not just suffering, con suffering, quote unquote, so consequences, but we're really the ones sending the message. And this is really a, a revolution, if you think about it. We always thought that, you know, what happens there is a decision for us. He's saying it's the opposite. It's really us deciding for up there also. Now, it goes so far that he's going to study a Pirkei Avot that you all know, and I'm going to share it with you, and it's going to be a revolution how to understand it. This is one of the nicest pieces I believe in the Hagaot, in the notes that his son wrote, that has to do with the famous Mishnah. The Mishnah in Bikavot says the following Da male mala mimach. Ain roa vozen shomat vichol maasecha basefer nichtavit. So, this is a famous Bikavot that says that there are three things that happen. I used to hate that Bikavot um, when I was younger because. Uh, the way it was explained to me was very bad, as I'm going to explain to you how it was explained to me. But Ain Roa, there's an eye that sees. So <laughs> the, the way my, uh, one of my teachers taught me was if you take a video camera and you put it in front of you the whole time, so your behavior is going to be changing a lot because there's somebody on the other side who's watching you. Um, I, I, I was, I, uh, I, I guess that image disturbed me and I did not like it. And uh, it, it wasn't positive. When you say that to a child, you know, there's always somebody watching you like this. It's very difficult to understand this. Uh, it's a little negative, you know, to be feeling that there's a policeman always looking at you and writing, taking notes, you know. I was in Shumat. There's somebody listening to you, somebody writing, seeing you. The whole mass, everything you do, you're ready down. Ta -ta 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 -ta. You know, so I was 14, 15 years old. You tell me that, and that was not uh, something I wanted to have to do with. So it was not very well taught to me, but it was missing the keywords. And the keywords was, So the way we translate this in the normal, you know, chat, is, you have to know what's above of you, right? What's above you? Know that basically above you, there's the Bono Shel Olam. And that Kalabar Hu is seeing, listening, and writing down. <clears throat> That's how it's translated. The son of the Nefesh Achaim, Rabbi Yitzhak Mivolojin, he says, no, that's not what it means. Da malemala mimach. If you cut it after the three words, and then the fourth word, it means something else totally. Instead of know what's above of you, which is Akadar Baruch Da malemala, you have to know that what's above, everything that is above, mimach, comes from you. The whole, the opposite. It's not like who's looking to, you know, nail you. The opposite. Da malemala, everything that happens, even above, 
Mimach comes from you. That's how far your influence goes. To the extent that even the Ain Ro'an, Ozen Shomat, all these things, it means to say that you give power, Kav Yachol, to Bere Olam to be able to do certain things. Again, that's the way Akar Maruch put in his world, according to the source that we saw. He could have done it different. Yeah, he could know the future. He could know everything you're going to do. But he decided to give you the, the free will to decide to do things. Here too, Akar Maruch could do everything without you. Yes, but he decided not to. He decided that you're going to be the one taking the lead. So that malimala mimcha. You have to know that everything that happens limala, everything that happens above mimcha. It comes from you. You're the author not only of your life, not only of, of what happens down here, but you're the author of what happens up there. So really, you're above what's up there. And that's where the revolution happens. That's what the note is saying here in Karov I don't know if you see the note. Let's continue the Nefesh Achai. Ubeemet ki ha'ish hechacham ve'yaven etzot la'amito. Truth is that the person who is hacham and understands this to its core, to its uh, truth, libo yachil bekirbo bechil ul ada. Really, after understanding something like this, how how strong this is, one should, you know, be taken by a, a, a spirit of of uh, reverence, of seriousness. If you know that every action you do has consequences. You know, much like a president. The president says, uh, you know, we're opening the economy, the shares go up, boom. President says, uh, we've had the spike in numbers of uh, COVID-19 patients, boom, it goes down. Uh, every word he says, there's a, a ramification, there's an impact in the economy, in things like this. Every word we say, every action we do, everything is, forget about being watched in a negative way. No. You don't tell the president, everybody's watching, therefore, you know, it, it's, it's the opposite. When everybody's watching, it could be either that your child and the teacher is watching every move you do, so you better be careful because you start talking to your friend, da, 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 and they tell you, hey, stop talking! Yeah, that's one way of looking, or the other way of means you are so powerful, that everything you do has an impact. Everything you say has an influence, has a consequence, has a ramification. The two extremes are always going to be, you know, having somebody looking at them, either because they're really, you know, young and they're, they're immature, or because they're so influential, so strong, that every move they do is going to be very, very powerful. And that's what he's saying here. Uh, um, you know, kol mashima lemama mimcha. You have to know that everything that happens above is coming from you. He's using strong words of one should be like very afraid almost of, of the challenge of life because now it's not a joke. Like everything I do has a strong influence. We talk about, oh, this is all pretty, this is all beautiful. What would say the difference between the positive actions or the good actions and bad actions, positive and negative actions, but it's true too for the negative actions also. When a person does the wrong thing, how far they could get, to, to, to be, could be very destructive, even when it's a chet that is very kal. Pay attention to this, and this is the next subject. Even more, you know that Nebuchadnezzar and Titus, they destroyed the Beta Mikdash. What you do has much more power and much more influence than what they did. How is that? These two individuals, they didn't do any kilkul, they didn't have any influence above. Because they don't have any connection, any, any power, any strength on the Olamot 
שיהיו יכולים לנגוע כלל במעשה, and that their actions would have any kind of influence. So how did it work? Do, does someone have the power to come and say, oh, today I'm just going to destroy the Bet HaMikdash. I'm just going to go and destroy the Bet HaMikdash. Really, you think that's how it works? That Nebuchadnezzar woke up and he had that on his schedule for that day? Everything again starts from the, buff, from the bottom, sorry. שבחטאינו נתמעט ותש כביכול כוח גבולה של מעלה. Our uh, um, sins were so influential that they brought down or brought a terrible weakness on the power of Hashem כביכול. Again, that doesn't mean God cannot do whatever he wants. It means that that's what God decided to do. That he's going to have His connection with the world is going to be filtered by us. It's going to be commended by us. It's going to be balanced by us. He would love to give. The Beracha is his. But it's up to us if we accept it or not, in a sense. And we are the ones who deal with that, with the volume. You know, how much would you let in? So in this case, the Koach of, of Ma'ala, right? מתיש כביכול כוח גאולה של מעלה. את מקדש השם טימאו, when it says in the פסוק, they made the בית המקדש of השם טמא, impure, כביכול, which בית המקדש are we talking about? המקדש העליון, again, it doesn't mean that, look, I don't know what's going on above there, I'm down here, right? So I don't know what's going on. All I know is that above there, <coughs> we talk about the reflection, that the bottom and the top match, right? It's like a mirror, uh, you know, connection. Uh, we think that here we pay the consequences above. What he's saying is that you from down here are the one sending the message to the above. Your actions here, yesh me'ayin, you have an impact on the above. Once you establish that, then the bottom is, yes, the reflection of the above, but it doesn't mean that the above decides for you. You decide for the above. You decide how the mikdash shel mala is going to be in what health a state is going to be. When you do your actions, Tim'u, at Mikdash Hashem Tim'u, he says, they, they made the Betah Mikdash Tameh, a Mikdash Ha'elion, we're talking about the Betah Mikdash Shel Ma'ala. And through that, we write A, B, C. A sends to B, who sends to C. A is us, B is the Betah Mikdash Shel Ma'ala, C is Betah Mikdash Shel Ma'ata. Ve'al yedei kach, ha'ya lahem koach l'nebuchad netza, l'titut, Because of that, it gives strength to Nebuchadnezzar and Titus, or permission, or green light, or, or, or possibility, ability, to go ahead and to destroy the Mikdash Shel Mata. Ha-mechuvan neged ha-mikdash Shel Ma'ala. This mechuvan that is exactly in the bottom corner. There's no top and bottom. The point is that it's the reflection of the spiritual higher point, which is the Mikdash Shel Ma'ala. But it doesn't mean that you are The Korban that you the no, you're the one who sends the message to Bet Hamikdash and Mala. You're the one who decides, quote unquote, what's going on in there. Now, Chachamim said in the Midrash an expression that is very interesting. Um, there are several expressions actually in the in the Chazal that discuss the impact of or what they did. You know, Nimuchanet Sarantitus. One of them is called Kimchat Techinat Techinat. Kimchat Techinat Techinat literally means You have grounded, grounded, ground, ground, grinded, I don't know, um, 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 flour. Well, you understand the mashal. If you don't, I'm going to explain. If you take uh, uh, wheat and you grind it, then you have flour. If you grind flour, obviously it makes no sense. You're not going to make it more flour than it was. When you say to someone, you're grinding flour, It means that you're not doing anything. None of your actions are influential. You are just on the recipient side, not on the active part. That's the mashal that the Chachayim are giving about Titus. Titus and Nebuchadnezzar, they don't have power of decision. They have power of execution after they have been given the green light of doing some certain things. Who does those things? We do. So Kimchat Techinat Techinat is a good mashal. You are grinding 
flower. Well, which means you're not doing anything. There's another mashal in the Chachamim that says the same thing. Uh, Arye, if I remember correctly, it's Arye Ketila Katalit. You have killed a dead lion. It's a great, a great mashal for you cannot come, you know, to Yerushalayim and destroy the Beit HaMikdash. No such thing. You don't have that power. No one has that power. You have to, you are invited to come in and destroy once it's already gone. When the project is finished, you know, so then. And even in, 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 in uh, you know, in, in physical terms, it would be like, imagine a place that is very guarded. Imagine Fort Knox. Fort Knox, you can't come close to Fort Knox. You know, there's speculations. What's inside there? Nobody knows. Some say it's full of gold. Some say there's nothing. <laughs> Nobody knows. It doesn't matter. For the ones who don't know, it's a, a stack of a pile of gold of the United States, supposedly. Right? So Fort Knox, let's say one day you hear Fort Knox was taken by uh, civilians who came in and destroyed the building. You know automatically it's because the guards left before. It was a building that they decided to leave, you know, have care, uh, or no less, and leave it, you know, to anyone. And that's how it happened. There's no way civilians could take that building with the kind of security it has. Oh, uh, what's the name of that place? Uh, Area 51. Everybody walked in. Remember when they said the big thing uh, a few months ago? Everybody was going to meet by Area 51. They said one or two million people are going to show up. I think there was between 50 and 100 people who showed up. But anyways, that's okay. Um, uh, we're going to go into, if you hear tomorrow that Area 51, everybody walked in like if there was no problem, you already know. They only walked in because security was gone. Overnight they left, you know, they, uh, they, they, they left completely. You know, Kavyachol, Leavdil, of course, but when the Nazis left certain camps and the next day they were free to go, well, they were only free to go because the Nazis left the camps. Now, of course, this is Leavdil, Elefate, Avdalot, but there's no way to do something. Muchad Nesar could go into the Betamidah and destroy it just like this. They were able to do that because the Shmira, this is not a regular building, but not all the, the Asala Nisim, Shayube, Bamikdash, and all, all, it was a special uh, place. Uh, this happens because we messed up, because we were not Zohe to have this. But it's not, we didn't suffer consequences that were, were meant above, uh, that, that studied above. The opposite, they emanated from us. We sent the message by Timeu et Echali, when we put Tum'ah in the Hechal Shel Mala through our bad actions and our bad thoughts and our bad uh, mouth, right? Uh, when we do these things, we're not zochet to have that. Once we're not zochet to have that, the security of the Tamikdash is gone. You can go into Fort Knox now. There's no more police. There's no more, uh, uh, you know, security system in Area 51. Of course you can walk in. But who dismantles the security? We do, because we have the joystick. So that's why the Chachayim say, Kimchat Techinat Techinat. It was flour that they were trying to grind. It was a dead lion that they were killing. Lion's killed already. When you put, put another knife inside, it's finished. So the consequence, again, the Vishachim is not a book that talks, uh, you know, uh, it's not a Musar book. It's not going to, uh, uh, you know, attack in a Musar way. It's going to tell you a, a, a scanner. What's going on in life? This is how it works. And it's good, it's good for both. When you're very influential, when you carry a gun, for example, right? You carry a gun, could use the gun for very good things. You could use the gun for very bad things. It's a description of having a gun that comes now with a description of people telling the person, hey, you got to be careful. Because although you, you're doing that for security purposes, but you have a gun now. If you have a gun, you got to be very careful. This is the gun of life. Selem Elohim is the gun of life. You are creating the image of God, which means that everything you do has a, a godly power in everything. If God had a power in everything, this is given kaviachol to you to work together with Hashem as if you are now the pilot and he's the co-pilot. I'm just going to finish before I uh, open to you, uh, Abi. Why? Because 
Vehema echerivu back navemata. So they were able to have the, 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 the impact on what we call miktash shel ma'ala. And at this point, when the guard is down, so then they could go into miktash shel ma'ala. Yes. A.B., you have to unmute yourself, I believe. It is. Um, okay, Dami Mela, Ami Mela Mach. You're equating it to there, there's like an extra body up there that's keeping score, sort of. And, and it, do we just go simply to the Berachot and Kilalot and say, you do this, and this happens. You do that, and this happens. Why do we have to say... Oh, we're causing consequences, and this is, you know, they're keeping score. That's what it sounds like to me. Just, we know Hashem says, you have consequences. You know what I'm saying? But It's as simple as that. And then number two, if you want to say, then you're going to be doing things because there's something up there, like I said, keeping score, like say, Kibbut Abba'em. You won't be doing it because it's the right thing to do. You're going to be doing it because somebody up there is keeping score and watching you. So I, I don't understand the reason for that extra piece in up there uh, with God's heavenly body or what do you want to call it? Okay, so maybe I was not like clear enough, but I don't agree with the way you, you said oh, it at the beginning. You said. I found the books. Oh, yeah, where are you? Uh, can you mute yourself? Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of noise behind you. Thank you. So, um, uh, no, Malemala is not somebody taking a score of everything. Uh, I would say like this, maybe to understand a little better. Imagine. Um, I give you two, two examples. I'm trying to, to understand a little bit better what's mala. Mala doesn't mean there's somebody writing down the notes and sending the things. That's not how it works. I think it's actually the opposite. Here we're just a reflection of, what, of the, I was going to say, of the true life, which is above. Okay, something like that. It's not complete because obviously we're down here. But here, it's not somebody looking at the things and writing down and, 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 and throwing down. It's more like, uh, um, imagine you have um, uh, an architect who is building uh, a building. Uh, before building the building, you do all the, the, the work in the office. So they're going to write all the measurements and they're going to do the things. That every, that when you look at the building at the end, you, you may have two ways how to look at it. Uh, one way is, okay, the building is down here, it's been built. But the other way is to say, but Everything has been decided in the previous year or two when we were working on the design, when we were working on the measurements. But this is like almost, quote unquote, the easy stuff is to actually build the building. The hard stuff is, the, the hard stuff is to, to, to have the, the plan, to, have, to purchase the, the, the plot, to... to to actually measure, to have a, 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 a design, to have all the, the, the people need to work behind it, to have all the measurements. This could take maybe even longer than building itself. The building is the, if you want the, the so where is the real, and we could have an argument on that. Actually, it's a pretty interesting thing. Where is the real? Is the real just once the building is made or is the real, you know, it's like if you come in the middle of a building, you say, I don't like the way the balcony looks. We had said, well, but that was decided, you know, a year ago when we, when we presented the plans to you. Now, you can't come down and say, I don't like the way the, the balcony looks. That, that's too late. Here is just the, the, the consequence of what has been decided a year or two ago with the renderings. And then and that's when we took the decisions. It's not writing down and applying it. I would prefer to look at it like that. When you do mitzvah, and again, this is just the beginning. Really, we're going to go much deeper in understanding how this works. But when I do a mitzvah, it's something spiritual. It's not something physical. Unless you're helping somebody who needs food, you give him food, he's eating, he's satisfied. That's something else. If I shake my lulav, like, it's not in the, in the world of physical. There's nothing with the lulav. The lulav doesn't do anything. It's not about that. When I shake a lulav, when I sit in the sugar, when I do a mitzvah, a mitzvah has, has something to do with, with the building of, of, of the building in the rendering, 
this is where the decisions are being, being not decision of how am I going to, you know, do the kelala of the berach. I don't believe that per se. I believe in everything. Happens. It's like if you say the real life is up there, and here you just see a physical representation of the real life. Now, I don't have the lenses to be able to see that. But when I do an action, when I do a mitzvah, when I do a avira, whatever it is, I'm living it. It's not sending a message right down a minus or a plus and then apply it down. That's exactly what we don't want to do. That's not how it works. It's not somebody keeping the count. Because like you're saying, I don't need a, a, a mala and a mata for that. A mala is, is the truth. And if I ask you now, where is the real Bet HaMikdash? The real Bet HaMikdash is in the health of the, pers- of, 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 of the Klal Yisrael, if you want. So if I could have a scan of, of the health of the Klal Yisrael and tell you they are living a life of a Bet HaMikdash, so system, automatically there's going to be a Bet HaMikdash here. That's just, oh, if there's a Bet HaMikdash here, oh, because there's a Bet HaMikdash there. And why is there a Bet HaMikdash there? Because we do a Bet HaMikdash Makom. Not the opposite. So it's not somebody taking the count. That, that's, that's, that's not the way he's learning. The way he's learning is the opposite, is that the, the real Bet HaMikdash, Mikdash Hashem Tim U, it's not down here. It's up there. What's up there? Well, forget about up and down. The, the up and down is, 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 is troubling. Is the real and the fake, if you want, in a sense. And it has a lot to do with Shar Gimel, but that's for another time. The real and the fake is the real life happening is my, my uh, I'll give you another example. If you see a person, a person looks healthy or not. Sometimes it's a siman that there's something wrong happening in a deeper, inside the person. Sometimes not. Sometimes a person could look very healthy and the person is, is miserable inside. So what's the real? Is it the outside of the person? Or is it the inside of the person? You go to the doctor, you make a general uh, screening of the person and, you know, uh, once a year you check, make sure that everything is good. You're going to have to check the blood. You're going to have to, and then you have to go, what's the real? Or is it the blood? Or is it the life? Mm. I mean, you really, you, if you're not feeling well, I guess you could, uh, it's a connect, but there's something deeper. There's something, another problem. The real depth of the, of the life is, 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 because I ate too much sugar, so now my blood is going to be, uh, you know, affected by it. And as a consequence of that, I may not feel well, etc., etc., etc. Where's the real and where's the... A little bit of the same thing. Mala and mata, I don't like translating it above and under. This is just a metaphor. But this is like the real life and, and, and the... And, and the uh, let me find a good word. And the adjusted uh, version of it, if you want. The real life being your neshama, your, your spiritual life, and you do that from down here inside the body. There's no neshama without a body. But when you do the mitzvot, that part of life that we don't see, we only see what we eat and when we go to sleep. But th- there's another part of life, which is the mitzvot and the spiritual uh, health of our, of our life. That is the real life. That's the part you don't see. So you're not having somebody writing down notes and then sending, a, a, you know, we're going to send a sniper you know, from above or, or we're going to send a, a, a letter that comes with a nice check in the mail. That's not how I see it at all. Here it's a pure reflection of, of the truth that is happening. This, the, the blood and, 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 and the feeling or something like this. I think Abraham is making funny faces. And when he makes funny faces, I start uh, being uh, a little nervous. Go ahead, Abraham. So I don't have the text in front of me, but I seem to recall that when uh, in the Torah, when we read about the Kelalot, there is the, the, the subject of who's bringing the Berachot and the Kelalot seems to be Hashem. Like I've, I've always wanted to read it as a direct consequence of our acts, just like we're, you know, that mala mala, it, it comes from you. It doesn't, it's not that Hashem is trying to punish you. It's just, you, you did, you took the wrong steps. You ate too much sugar. Now you feel wrong if a couple of years later, it, it, you know, you, you brought it upon yourself. But when I remember when reading the Klalot in or elsewhere, there seems to be an, well, I will bring this on to you. You know, I'll make you eat your children. I mean, th- that seems very direct, even though I want to read it as we just learned today. I, 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 look, I, I, I don't personally, it is written like this, it's true, but I don't know if, if that bothers me so much. At the end of the day, God didn't go to sleep. Right. So somebody has to, um, if you, maybe it happens earlier. In other words, how do you translate my shaking of the lulav 
in the health of, 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 uh, of, of the spiritual real life that I'm talking about. Now, someone has to do that conversion. God didn't go to sleep. He still has a complex job of, you know, doing all these things. So absolutely going to go through him. I don't see him out of the picture. I'm just saying he is there to interpret my command. So I'm not under, I'm on top in a sense. You understand? So he is there. But where does it happen in the thing? I think it's too babish to, to look at it as, 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 you know, he's taking notes and sending a punishment. Not at all. It's, it's much, much more complex than that and much more, uh, you know, with much more responsibility than that. Of, of, like I was trying to say there, I'm, I'm making a rendering. So if I make a mistake in the rendering and they're going to build it like this, it's going to look pretty ugly when, when, when uh, you know. So, but, but really the builder is God. So when God builds it, it looks really uh, ugly. And they're like, I'm sorry, but this is what you sent me. You gave me the thing and it looked like that. So I'm just building, I'm just doing it the way you, you sent me. I'm just a builder, you understand? So yes, he is involved. And, and, and no, it's not just writing down, you know, you, you're a good guy, you're a bad guy. I, I, this is the, that would be the lowest level of Avodat Hashem, like the Rambam says, uh, you know, of Yid'ah, you know. I'm the, that's not the point. Here is the responsibility of being the master architect of the world. It's a kind of very different approach to it. I, I, I wouldn't see the Mala as that. So just combining what A.B. and Abraham said. Oh, that's two A.B.'s. Uh, who, who said uh, this got to be some the big problem, Dave? Uh, but uh, the, the, you know, it's uh, I see it that way. You know, having uh, a little different than that. I, I, you know, Rabbi, what is Beit Hamikdash Lemala mean? I have no idea what that means. That's you great. Keep, that means two of us. You keep uh, saying you keep saying if it's up there, then there's a Beit Hamikdash down here. I don't, I don't know what that means. I, I can't figure I, out what that I, means. I don't know either. I, I don't know either. And, and, and we, we have to try to help each other on all these uh, subjects. Because, uh, first of all, uh, we're, you know, there's two ways how to learn Kabbalistic concepts. I'm looking at, oh, there's a Kabbalistic. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm looking at this as philosophy. It's, 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 a, it's a deep philosophy that we have to try to understand. What I think it means, uh, again, like I said at one point, there's no Betamik Dash above. There's no, there's, it's not that. And there's no above and, and, and the bottom. It's all Mashalim for us because we, are, you know, we look at, at above as a tall. And we're going to talk about this. You know, when, when it says, Hashem uh, Lemala, it's not Lemala, it's everywhere. Like, there's no. Anyways, the point, Betamik Dash Lemala, for me, it's a level. For me, it's a level. It, 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 if, if, you know, Osim Retzon Shel Makam, that means that there's a Shalom Bayit between Akal Baruch and the Bnei Israel. If one is uh, at ease with the other, if one enjoys the company of the other, that's what I call the Bet HaMikdash. And Mikdash Hashem Tim U, they make the, that relationship sour. It, it doesn't, you know, when, when it's a business relationship, like, you know, maybe when we get to Shabbat, we'll talk about that, but when there's a business relationship with God or anything like that, you're not really, into, it's not a Shalom Bayit thing. Okay, not Shalmet, sometimes we need to separate. That's really how I look at the Bet HaMikdash. So Bet HaMikdash Shel Mala is really genuine. It's the truth. It's pure. It's, it's, it's real. It means the real, the real relationship we have. Do, do we have that relationship of, of we want to be together? If we don't, and it persists like this for a while, then, then permission given, quote-unquote, to now having the enemies destroy. In other words, those are walls that don't represent anything anymore. For me, that, that's what it is. And that's what I was saying about the health of the person and, 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 and then the outside, what you look like. The Bet HaMikdash down here is just a physical representation of the health in the relationship between Akadah Baruch and us. So if that relationship is good, that's what I call Mikdash El Mala. So then, of course, there's going to be a Bet HaMikdash down here because that's in the relationship that was needed, whatever. But if we don't have that Shalom Bayit, then definitely there's not going to be a Bet HaMikdash. Mean, I mean, what's the point? It's not just an edifice. It's not just a building. There's a lot more than that. So that's how I understand Bet HaMikdash Shalom It doesn't have to be that you imagine stones, etc. I'm sure there are deeper things that I don't comprehend, but in a basic level of understanding the stuff that happened up there, from, that's why I call it the truth of life, if you want. It's the, the non-seen truth of life. The health of a couple, for example, you can't see it. Sometimes you see a couple and they look wonderful, and then you hear, oh, they got divorced. Oh, I mean, you know, I wouldn't, not really. I'm, it's incredible. Sometimes it happens like, 
from the, the least expected people, you like, oh my God, like what happened? So it's a little bit the same thing. And it's not like you could only, you only get divorced because there was a deeper problem for 10 years. You couldn't see each other in the eyes, you know? That's what I call Migdash El Mala and Migdash El Mata. For me, it's a, and that's why I call it the, maybe this is a better mashal to understand all this Mala and Mata, you know? So, so, so uh, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, that, that would do it, you know? <clears throat> Again, yeah. you know, basic Brad? Kabbalistic level, I don't know if you call that, you know? Yes. Yeah. So what I, I, I understand that we, it's like we, the, the real world is our, is in a spiritual way. It's not the physical, it's not the concrete world that we are, we are, we are seeing. Because One aspect of it, if you want, or the, the, okay. It, it's, it's like, it's a, there is a world that is a spiritual and the, the proje projection of this spirituality is become physical. It's like I, 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 I'm going to stop you in a second. I would venture and say that it's almost, I know we're going to need for the brain, for the human brain to have it in two steps, but I would venture and say that it's the same thing, really. It's just a different aspect of, you don't have two lives. You have one life, but no. I don't know if I, if I make it's, myself clear. But. It's, it's one life, it's one life, but what we see is the representation of what it, for the soul of the world of the person of the uh, of the animals of the objects of everything we are really everything is a soul is a spiritual okay we see physical and the, the physicality depends of the quality of the spirit okay. Fine. of the thing okay what i what i have a problem to understand is that and maybe I didn't understand that everything comes from here to the Shamaim or to God. That, like we give the we give the first if we, we we give the fuel to, to, to Hashem make a decisions. What I was thinking, where is the for example, inspiration? What you say inspiration, or that I have a Lighting. I was, I was, I was remembering my teshuvah, and so I said, the first, the second that comes to my mind, the idea of teshuvah wasn't my decision. My decision, my decision came after. What I'm going to do with this? But there are many things that I feel in my life. I'm sorry to be self-centered in this, but to understand, is that many things I see that comes from him. So I understand that we are very important um, a piece of the game, but I can understand that everything comes from me. Is is I think it's both. It's, sometimes Hashem sends something to, for us to act. I, I don't disagree with you. It's, first ah. of all, your remark is is very good. It's very good. Thank you for sharing. And I I want to say. Let's say you have you have eyes, Baruch Hashem. You could see. Right? Yeah. God gave you these eyes. So is it okay to say I used my eyes in a good way because I saw someone who was suffering and I opened my arm, right? So do you say that it's me? Well, you could always go back to, to you know to a deeper level and say, well, it, it's not really me because God gave. Me. But the moment I think it's just a simple you know basic you know answer to your question. The moment you have the choice to use something for good or bad, yeah, you, you, this is your definitely partially. I, I agree with you that it's not complete. And but it's in true that point, in life of a person, God is going to give you some moments that exactly. you have the ability of making the right or the wrong choice. Exactly. You still own that moment because you know you were given a, a set of, of of you know a situation, and you had to pick you know how you're going to react to that situation. Why would that? You own that moment. Maybe from that moment it's called Salem and Kim. Before that, God is 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 still giving you, you know. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it no, is free will, of course, free will. But what she's saying no, is that only, only, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, only to understand that uh, when we study this, is uh, yeah, like I, I think that you try to transmit and you you transmit that we are very powerful and and, and we have um, almost all the responsibility and i think that it's not that's, it's that's not like how god wanted the world to work he said humans 
I'm not but going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to put your things in front of you. But you have to make the choice. And it's going to be always like this. Even in Parnassah, think about it. God had in mind for you to be super successful. And you messed up in the meeting. <laughs> you messed it up. You lost it. Can't come to God and say, God, I was supposed to get it. I gave you everything. You, you misbehaved. Uh, you, you go on a date with somebody. The girl is very good, or the boy, whatever, vice versa. And, and you messed up the date. You messed up God's plan. You have the free will to do it. Does it send a very, 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 very powerful message up there? Of course, in, on a different topic, not on the date and the panasa. Absolutely. This is how it's written here. Does it mean that God went to sleep and doesn't come at all to give you a set of things? That's not true. He does come. He does prosper. And your power starts then. And God says, I'm going to go from that. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I have to end here uh, uh, because I have something else. It's 4 o'clock. Thank you. Anyways, uh, on Wednesday... It's going to be Erev Shavuot. I will be um, completely full of shooting to prepare. I don't think I could do it. So I'm sorry. You're probably going to meet next week on Monday. Visit us. Rav, for the people, that, I'm sorry, but for the people that's going to be in the house, can you uh, send shiurim or something in a, to the way to print to start I'm, in the house? I'm working on this. Unfortunately, uh, okay, we'll talk. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye.